I've set up a few 3D printers in my day, like this production print farm, which is basically designed to run around the clock. But I've also set up tons of other 3D printers for personal use over the years as well. And if you don't go into it with a plan, chances are it looks something like this. A printer or two haphazardly put on some horizontal surface you found with filament and plastic and tools scattered everywhere. Not exactly optimized, and we can do better. So I'm gonna set up a 3D printing station from scratch here in my new workshop and share some tips along the way that maybe you can use to improve your setup. Because it turns out there's a lot we can leverage from a print farm. So let's go. The first thing any 3D printing setup should have is storage, and as much as possible. So I decided to press the easy button and pick up some cabinets to fit the space since I'm lucky enough to have 12 feet at my disposal and I really don't want to have to build them. Of course, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy cabinets for a 3D printing setup. You could just use an old desk, maybe park a rolling drawer cabinet underneath, or just go for some simple shelves. But either way, having a place to put all the things that come with the hobby or business of 3D printing will make life easier. And when we make things easy to use, we're more likely to use them. Another quick tip I will give is if you're choosing what type of storage to use for your 3D printing setup, Go for drawers, not doors. Drawers are much more convenient and will quickly show you everything that's inside of them. Doors turn into dark caves where things go to die. When you open a cabinet door, you only see what's on the outside and miss everything buried behind it. Just trust me on this one, drawers are the way to go. The next obvious requirement for any 3D printing setup is a solid surface to put your machines. Just about anything will do as long as it's sturdy. You should avoid putting your 3D printers on wobbly or bouncy surfaces because the resonance of the machines running on them can cause print issues. And as you can see, I'm going for some beefy butcher block here, which is definitely overkill. People used to swear by the cement paver trick, but I found any stable surface is perfectly fine. But really for tip number two, we wanna make sure that you have free surface available too. As in, leave some room for things other than printers. Sometimes we see a spot that can technically fit two printers on it, so we shove two printers on there. But what happens when you need to set something like a build plate down, or do some maintenance, or stage some parts you're working on? You end up creating a headache for yourself, and headaches are just no fun. So plan ahead and reserve a spot, ideally very close to the 3D printers that you can use for extracurricular activities we all do as a result of 3D printing. The real trick then becomes, can you actually keep it clear? Given how much room I have in this space, I'm gonna to have tons of unused real estate, but it's also a good idea to have a bit of extra room for future expansion too. When that new cool printer comes out that you've been waiting for, it'd be nice to have a spot for it. Okay, we've got plenty of storage situated for all of our filament, tools, stuff like that, which we're gonna circle back to. And we've got a solid foundation to not only place our printers on, but also to generally work from. But you're probably wondering what those things are. Now, maybe you've figured it out. If you have, let me know in the comments. But for tip number three, we are gonna to wanna to get rear access to our 3D printers. And that's what these are for. These are actually gonna mount drawer slides, heavy duty, full extension drawer slides, to create a sliding platform so that when I need to get to the back of the printer, I can just pull it out, reach whatever I need to do, push it back. And as you can see, I've got two spots for two very special printers. I think I know what you're thinking. Doesn't a printer sitting on drawer slides contradict your whole solid foundation point earlier? 
Actually, no, I was worried about that, but when these slides are locked back in the closed position, it's extremely rigid and shouldn't affect the printers at all. Even after adding these big Bamboo Lab printers on here, everything feels really solid. And I know this is a bit of a unique solution that maybe not all of you will take, but you could accomplish the exact same thing by just making sure the table or the shelf your printers are sitting on has wheels or can be easily moved to get back there. All right, printers are in place. You can see we've got nice, easy access to the rear. If there's a clog or you gotta do some maintenance, it's easy to get back there. Super useful, especially for these bigger H2D machines. And to the keen observer, you may notice that there's one that's slightly different. And that slight difference is this is the H2S, which stands for single extruder. So this is the newest lineup in their new kind of flagship model. And I'm really excited about this one because it expands the build volume slightly because you don't have the offset from the other nozzle. Plus it comes at a lower price point so you can get into something like this much easier. So more to come on that when we get printing. Now let's talk about filament. Now one thing you may have noticed and maybe thought was odd was that there's this empty space in this bank of cabinets. And that was actually very intentional. And that's because for tip number four, we're talking about drying your filament. Now luckily, companies like Bamboo Lab make an AMS with a drying function that actually works really well. But what about those partial spools or maybe spools that you need to dry out? That's where the filament dryer comes in. This little guy right here is the best filament dryer that I have tested so far. It's made by a company called StatPro. I'll leave links to where you can find it. But this thing gets below 10% relative humidity, which is crazy to think about. One mistake I see a lot of people making is they buy the electronics or camera equipment dryers that you can find on Amazon. The problem with those is they only get down to about 30 to 40% relative humidity, which is better than nothing, but it's not quite dry enough to make a difference. This thing getting below 10% is amazing. And this company also has a couple different sizes. I may end up getting a bigger one at some point, but this thing is gonna go right in there. There are of course other options out there for filament drying, like this one from Sunlu, which is surprisingly good. Just pick whatever works for your budget and size requirements. Now there's obviously still some room in this little area and that was again by design. I could put another AMS unit on top of here and feed it up to the printers. Or for tip number five, I think I wanna park a UPS or uninterruptible power supply to run the printers in case there's a power blip. I can rest assured knowing that my printers should ride through it. Now, as I've said before in other videos, it's not gonna help you for an extended power outage. You're just kind of screwed. But if your power flicks on and off, that's enough to kill a print if you don't have a UPS. So it's peace of mind and it's relatively cheap insurance. 3D printers are little power hungry monsters, especially these new H2D and H2S printers from Bamboo Lab. So anytime you're setting up a 3D printer, you should be aware of not only keeping the power on, like by using a UPS, but how much power you're gonna potentially use. Most consumer 3D printers in the US will pull an average of around 300 watts during use. But the biggest power draw is almost always at the beginning of a print when everything is warming up. So if you wanna avoid tripping breakers, you should consider staggering the start of multiple printers set up on a single circuit. And a better move would be to make sure that you don't have too many printers on any one circuit so you don't have to worry about it. I mentioned this H2S from Bamboo Lab is brand new, and it's awesome. But even though it has half the nozzles of its big brother, the H2D, the power draw is roughly the same thanks to the heated chamber and fast bed heating cycle. This printer duo is gonna allow me to print just about whatever I want in my new shop. But before we let these things loose, we need to address nature. Look, it's a fact of life that everything poops even 3D printers. Okay, technically not all 3D printers do this, but it's a feature becoming more and more common, and if we just ignore it, it turns into a mess. So a well thought out 3D printing setup takes this into account. At my print farm, I simply let all the filament purges fall on the floor and we sweep them up once a week. It works for us since it's a production environment, but if your printer is in your home, you might wanna be a little bit more proactive. So I specifically chose to keep those printers pushed towards the front of the countertop so that I can fit a custom poop shoot catcher thing back here that neatly catches all the pieces and when it gets full, I can just empty it. Which leads me to tip number seven. And that is to have a trash can right next to your 3D printers. This is an absolute must in my opinion because we're constantly removing little bits of plastic from print failures, supports, and purges. 
And if there's no place to put it, it just kind of piles up everywhere, which is no bueno. So I decided to build my trash can into my cabinets with this cool little pullout here. But you don't need to do that. You could just put a small trash can somewhere and that's a perfectly reasonable solution. Remember, a clean space is a productive space, which is a perfect transition into tip number eight. We all know that using 3D printers requires the use of some tools. Most commonly some kind of scraper, flush trim cutters, a box cutter, a variety of hex keys, and maybe a screwdriver. And since we just talked about the importance of having a clean space, you know I'm not just gonna throw them on top of the counter, right? So now would be a great time to put your 3D printers to use and create some organization for this stuff. But not because it just looks good, which of course it does, but because it creates a place where it now lives so you can always know where to find it and where to put it back when you're done. There is nothing more frustrating than needing a tool for a common task and you can't find the dang thing. So if you find yourself using something over and over again for your 3D printers, buy one just for your 3D printing setup and keep it there. Don't share it between workspaces like your garage or your kitchen. Have the tools you need on hand in a dedicated place at all times. For some people, having everything visible on something like a pegboard works for them. For others, like myself, we prefer everything neatly tucked away. Just do what works for you and your workflow. Finally, for tip number nine, it's a good idea to at least consider the air quality around your 3D printers. Chances are these things are in your house and it would be nice to know if they're emitting anything harmful. So what you can do is pick up one of these air quality monitors to actually measure the air quality around your machines. They're pretty cheap and it will give you constant peace of mind about the air in your printing room. If you're printing mild materials like PLA and PETG, you'll see that there really isn't much to worry about. But if you start using ABS or ASA, things like that, you can actually see the VOC and particle count change. If that's the case, then you may want to invest in a small air filter or purifier in addition to this meter. It'll go a long way in cleaning up the air and it's cheap insurance in my opinion. When you're creating a functional space to do something you enjoy, the line can sometimes blur between utility and just looking cool. For me, I get inspired when I see organization and thoughtful design. So I wanna take this 3D printing space to the next level and make it look amazing. There are so many things to tweak and iterate on over time too. In fact, I look at any workspace as a work in progress. What I think is the right thing today may change down the road, so we've always got to be open to change. At the end of the day, making your space enjoyable to be in will cause you to spend more time using it. Plus, it should help get those creative juices flowing for your projects. So whatever that means to you, maybe it's minimalist utility or surrounding yourself with artwork or even just past projects. Make your 3D printing space your own. Look, there's a lot more you can do to improve your 3D printing setup, but if you just follow those nine tips, you'll find yourself enjoying this hobby even more. You can find links down in the description for any product I used, including the awesome new H2S from Bamboo Lab. Happy printing out there.